uh, with my company's Mastermind Adventures. Uh, this is Evan uh, Colbert. He is a licensed social worker. Um, and this is also Peter. Great. I just totally like on your last name. Peter Six Person. Peter. <laughs> just Peter. Um, and he works for the Justice Resource Institute. And I brought them along with me because I think that, um, you know, I'll talk to you a little bit about Mastermind Adventures, kind of our journey. Um, but I think some of the most interesting stuff that we're doing right now has to do with these two guys and it's the therapeutic applications, both for tabletop and for um, live action role play. So Mastermind Adventures started about six years ago as kind of a volunteer venture. My children are homeschooled, uh, one of them has autism. So we were looking for ways to connect our kids with other kids and to kind of help them find activities where they could make friends, get moving, um, and you know, kind of keep, continue their own education. Um, so it came about as really we were just organizing events for homeschoolers. Um, one of the first things that we did was organize NERF events for homeschoolers. And when we had 100 kids show up one night, we were like, oh, this is a thing. Um, we've got kids who do not exercise otherwise or are just on their video games and they are now running around, talking to each other, making friends. So that was the first aha moment for us. Um, the second aha moment was when we organized our first LARP event with the help of my cousin, who's videotaping, and her boyfriend at the time. Um, and it was a Camp Half-Blood Percy Jackson inspired event. Um, we had hoped we could get 20 kids there. We organized it just for homeschoolers, and we had 175 kids show up. And so this is our fourth year running that event. It's actually happening next Saturday, so stay tuned. You can watch our Facebook page for information on that. Um, but what we're finding is that these programs are really connecting with kids. They're connecting with kids in a way that, um, you know, I think in one of the things that we wanted to talk about is that I think everybody, parents at least, they're all looking for ways to get their kids off of computers for a little while and get them to engage. Um, you know, research is showing that kids are losing the ability to make eye contact, even if they're neurotypical. Um, they're losing the ability to be able to advocate for themselves. Um, and so these are ways that we can get them into an activity they're already buying into, and then while we have them, teach them social skills, teach them the soft skills, um, and get them to uh, learn some things that they would not otherwise maybe be. You know, if you said, hey, let's come learn some social skills, they might not be interested, but if you say, hey, here's a Nerf Blaster, suddenly they're, they're into it. <laughs> um, so, um, so uh, you know, again, I'm kind of going to glaze over some of this. You guys already know about EduLARP. I don't have to tell you about that. Um, so we started with these kind of all-day programs. We've been running these all-day programs for about four years. Uh, two to three times a year, depending, and they are really based in literature, so they're living literature programs, which then hooked a lot of libraries and community centers and after-school programs and things like that to want us to come do it for, for them. So instead of a six-hour event, now we're doing a micro-LARP that's two hours, where we incorporate a lot of movement activities. If it's a Harry Potter-inspired thing, we're doing Quidditch. If it's Percy Jackson, we're doing Troll Ball. Anybody know Troll Ball? You should know Troll Ball because it was invented in your country. Um, <laughs> uh, so Troll Ball is this super awesome game that um, instead of using a ball, you use the head of a troll, which obviously isn't real yet. Um, so, uh, and, and everybody's got a sword, and you go, you know, if you get hit, you go down on one knee, there's a healer that comes in. Literally every kid loves Troll Ball. Everyone <laughs> is looking for a reason, you know, for an excuse to hit their friends. We give them that, so we are popular. Um, other things that uh, we are doing for enrichment, I think I already talked about this, social and academic applications, the physical movement, um, NERF, um, you know, all of that stuff. Um, again, I'm going to kind of glaze over this. We'll let Peter talk a little bit more about the therapeutic LARP that we're doing. So what has happened is that as we've been doing this now, it's been five or six years, uh, we actually created a company that does this. Uh, we have Friday Night NERF every single Friday. We've got a bunch of 30 to 50 kids come in every Friday and run around with Nerf Blasters and, um, and learn some, some cool skills at the same time. Um, and so, uh, and then we do these all day LARPs and we're just now this year kind of figuring out how to do more traditional style LARPs. So we've got now some that are more serial, we have some that are, um, have different types of applications. So, um, and that's what Peter will talk about a little bit more. Uh, but Peter contacted us because one of his students was interested in coming to one of our all-day events and then he wanted to know what else we had to offer. And we happened to be just starting our serial program at the time, it was last summer, 
called The Hero's Journey, and some of his students came to, to that, and that's how we got that started. And then when that ended, we were looking to continue that because they really benefited, and I'll, he'll be able to tell you more about that. Um, the therapeutic table talk game that we developed is called Quest. It is specifically developed for kids who have autism or other social deficits that need practice. Um, and the, what's different about this, because I know I've noticed that other people are also using these games for kids to teach social skills and other things, we are specifically developed it for simplicity. We want anybody to be able to pick it up and run that game if they're a therapist or an educator so that the majority of kids can get a benefit from it. Um, make it really, really easy for educators and other professionals to buy in. Um, so Evan will talk to you a little bit more about that. Um, in all of our games that we have, um, you know, we have a focus on safety. Um, we have some, you know, rules and things that we're, that, that we just kind of make sure that the kids know, soft touch, you know, how not to hurt each other while you have fun and swing that sword. Um, we do a lot of, uh, you know, collaborative storytelling, a little bit of practice with that. Um, we, uh, we do a lot of team challenges and a lot of kind of, um, I guess, team building, you know, kind of traditional team building is worked in um, so that the kids are getting the benefits of that as well. Um, so here are some of our initial programs. This awesome guy is at our Eagles Club program. This is our Harry Potter inspired event that we've done about five times. Um, the kids are really into Harry. Is anybody not into Harry Potter? <laughs> like you say Harry Potter and people are just like, oh my gosh. So um, we have a total blast with this. It's an all day event. We do it at a local Unitarian church. Um, and uh, we've created our own kind of backstory so as not to infringe on anybody's intellectual property. Um, but it's really fun to watch the kids get assigned to these houses that we've made up and this whole backstory and lore and they are into it and they are like, no, I am a grizzled heart and so I am the friendliest person ever and, you know, they really buy into, um, you know, embodying the things that we tell them that their house represents um, and it's really cool. We've done a Star Wars inspired LARP, we've done a zombie LARP, um, we are, we just this past weekend started a LARP for young children and other children, you know, up to probably about 10 years old who are, it's specifically to practice social skills so there's no combat and that's a new thing for us. So they are basically solving problems with friendship. It was inspired by a tabletop role playing game called Golden Sky Stories and that's all about um, these uh, henge which are, you know, shape shifting fairies. So we call it Fairy Tales, Adventures, and Friendship Forest, and um, they have to figure out, you know, through their powers of animal cuteness, how to uh, help people be friends, and, and it was amazing. Um, so much fun. So therapeutic LARP, and I, I know I, I crushed you all that because I'm trying to give them some time to talk a little bit more about these therapeutic applications. So this is Peter. He's going to talk about the therapeutic LARP that we developed and some of the things that we've discovered. I work for the Justice Resource Institute, specifically Meadow Ridge Academy. Uh, I'm the Director of Competency Services, which is a um, really confusing title. Uh, basically, I help students develop like executive functioning, discover a sense of self. Uh, it's, it's an amazing job. And uh, basically, it's one of the hardest jobs in the world. Um, the population we work with are students suffering from uh, complex childhood trauma. Um, a lot of these students don't feel safe um, outside of their safety bubble, it's like fight or flight all the time. So how do we give them an opportunity to get out of fight or flight and start exploring their self and taking chances in things that might seem really mundane to us, like writing a resume? Um, group therapy is something that is very difficult to get buy-in from students. Um, if you want to get a student to sit down and say, we are going to do resume writing today. Um, people with complex trauma, uh, that's incredibly difficult to sit down and be in your own head for that amount of time. For me, somebody not with complex trauma sitting down and doing a resume is just something I don't even want to do. So <laughs> getting the students to do that was really difficult. We were in a, a system where we had a lot of kids just playing sports and basketball. And as the population changed, there was this group of kids that was over in the corner swinging sticks at something. Uh, I go over and I ask what they're doing, they tell me they're LARPing. Um, at the time, I know nothing about this, but I can see that they're passionate about it. So we need to build this into it, I mean, Kristen. Um, and I say, oh, I gotta get these kids, um, I gotta sneak in the vegetables with the ice cream, is basically my idea at this point. So what we do is we have this LARPing adventure, 
Um, but they can't go on the adventure until they pitch to the queen why they should be going on the adventure, <laughs> what kind of experience they have, and then self-advocating for themselves how much money they should make. Um, uh, <laughs> Nobody questions how alike it was to my resume working workshop. And they are just ready to go. So the first week we see people saying, you can pay me whatever you want, I'm going on the adventure. They do the adventure, they can pay whatever, right? Then they blow the money on the nicest sort that they by the last week, everybody's saving money, advocating for uh, as much money as they think they can realistically get. The kids are 100% buying into this system, right? So it goes really well. Kids are working together. They're trying stuff out in a, in a really trauma-informed way. So we see that this works. Uh, the kids have come a long way. So we're going to go We're gonna go for a little something that's a little more difficult in our next six-week session, and that's emotional regulation. We sit down with these kids in group therapy and we say, we want to work on emotional regu regulation. Let's do some deep breathing. When they sit in their head, they do some deep breathing. Those traumatic thoughts come back. It's scary, right? So we're now going to do an adventure uh, that we had done in, I guess, in the winter, um, where they're actually coming up against NPCs that represent characters they have to emotionally regulate to get to the next chamber, to get to the next group. These kids who won't sit down and work on emotional regulation will go up to this character who's having a panic attack and teach that character emotional regulation skills. There is one point where 10 students who will never work together have a rap battle with one of these NPC characters to uh, basically get them to emotional regulate. And this is something you won't see because they're in a safer environment. This world is providing them an opportunity that our world failed them. We're giving them an opportunity to grow through this LARPing world which is an amazing thing. The, the developments they make are uh, huge. Um, and one thing, as I just go to edit, is um, we did this truth circle thing. And to get through this truth circle, they had to share a truth about their character. Not one of them shared a truth about their character to get through that. They shared a truth about themselves. So they shared something that was deep about family trauma, that was deep about, I don't think anybody here likes me. And these are kids that won't share anything with their clinicians. So why are they doing that? Like, what is coming out in this moment? Why do they finally feel safe to do that? And I'm actually going to yeah. your and, and that's, you know, I think um, one of the things as we look at clinically, what is going on for kids in that moment is the separation between themselves and another, and, and, and their character, the character that they've developed, this magic circle. But um, there's been a lot of research on a concept called bleed, which Sarah Thoman actually did a lot of really good work on. And what, I, you know, we have to mention that here. So it is what happens inside of a, a LARP is something that they take, they take with them. Kids especially, that veil between um, what happens in video games and what happens in storybooks that they're reading, and what happens in their fantasy reality, and then what is actually internalized for them uh, in their personal life, is the veil is very thin. So what we, what, we, what we have here is a prime opportunity for their character because they can't do the skills like building self-confidence. They can't do the skills like believing that they can overcome uh, some obstacle because in their world they haven't been able to, right? But as a character, what we've got are kids who now, you know, I, my name is Darian and I am, you know, a level two knight or whatever. I can do those things and I gain success. So what happens is that they then internalize that success and they go out into the world once they break the circle and they have that feeling of success, right, of accomplishment. So, um, okay, sorry. <laughs> I can talk a lot about that. Um, the, the tabletop uh, role-playing game, Quest, is we're, we're doing a lot of the same thing. We're teaching social skills. We're, we, it's you know, led by a therapist. Um, who has in mind what are the things that are going on for each of these kids, what are the skills that they're going to be developing. And then as we work together as a team, we are, we are uh, nudging and encouraging these, ki these kids to develop these social skills. So for example, um, we had you know, a kid who, uh, you know, I want to take everything and I want to, um, you know, I'm going to backstab everybody and I'm going to run away with the treasure. So that happens. He goes out and all of his friends at the, at the game are like, what are you doing? They have a, an, a, an intense negative reaction to this, right? He makes the decision, oh crap, he, he realizes how unsuccessful that idea was. He turns it around right away. Oh, I was just possessed by the evil, you know, the evil sword, I drop it and the <laughs> So he, he was able to make a really risky decision, 
right? A really socially risky decision with very little consequence because this is a very low risk environment for that. He realized what the consequences were and he turned it right around and was able to re-engage with his peers. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking for. Those are the kinds of things that are making this type of intervention so uh, therapeutically and clinically successful. I think that's all the time. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to wrap up real quick by saying that um, you know, the future of Mastermind is that we are uh, going to be moving to a distributed workforce, uh, kind of a gig economy, where our goal is going to be to train individuals in their own geographic area to run all of our curriculum and program. Um, we're starting with NERF because that's how we started, and then we'll be rolling out these other programs, and hopefully uh, we can infiltrate the world with role-playing and all of its goodness. Okay.